Hello everyone. Welcome to Gardening for Better Health. My name is Henry B. 723 and I'm glad that you stopped by to see what I'm up to today. I also want to give a special shout out to my subscribers. I appreciate you subscribing to my channel. I hope that you also hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified each and every time I upload a new video. To my new viewers, thank you for being here. I hope that you find value in the content that you see today. If you do, please like and share the video. It helps my channel a lot. Today, I wanted to share with you how I up-pot my squash plants. Everyone that gardens, gardens a little bit differently, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. You also need to keep in mind that the way that I do it may or may not be appropriate for your particular area. I am in planting zone 6A, and so I have to um, do things according to the weather here. I have friends that garden that are in Southern states. They have been going gangbusters because their last frost date has already come and gone and they've already got things in the ground. Whereas I am still struggling. My last frost date is not until May 5th. And even then we're subject to get a frost right after that. So it's not safe to put anything outdoors here until the week after Mother's Day. So we have a very short growing season. So today I cannot take these squash and put them outside. I have to up pot them so that they can continue to grow until it's warm enough to put them outdoors. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. You might wonder why am I growing squash in the first place? Squash is a very, very healthy food. As a matter of fact, most people think that squash is a vegetable and is treated that way, but squash is actually a fruit. It is a fruit because it grows from a flower. And as you can see, here are flowers here on this that are gonna open up at some point. The squash is gonna grow from those flowers and the squash itself, at, when it matures, has seeds. So because squash is grown from a flower and it contains seeds, that makes it actually a fruit. So it also has a lot of antioxidants and vitamins and minerals in it. So it's also considered a superfood. So it's very, very good for your health. It's very tasty. You can prepare it a lot of different ways. So that's why I grow squash because it's a very versatile food. It's a super food. And when you grow squash, you get a, a large quantity when you harvest if everything goes according to plan. So I was able to fill four pots uh, for these planter pots with sterilized dirt. I always sterilize my dirt because these plants are not going to go outside right away. They're going to be in the house. And if I put any type of dirt in the house and plant in it, I wind up with these gnats, <laughs> these little flies that go around. And the next thing you know, after you've planted things in unsterilized dirt, you have little things floating past your eye and it goes, did I see something? And it'll go this way. <laughs> did I really see something? And you blink. And next thing you know, you think you got something on you and you start, oh no, what is this? And they can infest your whole house. So that's why I am very adamant about when I am planting things in, that's gonna be indoors that the dirt be sterilized first so that I don't have all those uh, little flying uh, gnats and things in the house. So this dirt has been sterilized. I will sterilize some more so that I can actually get everything done. And I sterilize this dirt because I'm gonna be planting some seeds in here to start them. So in this tray, 
half the tray contains crookneck squash, the other half contains scallop squash. And this is the crookneck squash seeds that I used when I planted them in this tray. And this is the scallop squash. And that's what they're gonna look like when they're mature. So I like both of these varieties. Um, the variety that I like the best, I'm going to plant later. And I'll show you that as we get to it. So with these squash, I've already put the dirt in here. Um, the pot is actually 2.9 quarts in size. And I have a little tray underneath it a little clear tray to catch water when I water the plants. And that little tray is actually a two inch tray. So it's all ready for me to plant and water. So we're gonna start with the crookneck squash. And as you can see, I'm gonna turn it around here so you can see what's going on. There's a little hole in the bottom and I'm pushing through that little hole and I'm pulling it slightly. And as you can see, lots of roots on this plant. So it's more than ready to go from this tray into a bigger pot. So I'm going to plant it. I'm gonna make a hole in this dirt that's equal to the distance from here to the top. I'm going to take this tag out and set this in, in this hole and I'm going to collapse the dirt around it. I'll get them all planted. I have four pots. I'll plant this one. So I'm going to do today, while you are able to see, two of the crookneck squash. And I have tags for them so that I know what's where. So that's a crookneck. And this is a crookneck. I'm going to set these aside. And then I'm going to plant two of the scallop squash. Here. And as you can see, there are two stalks that was growing in that one tray. What I usually do is I will plant two seeds in one cell and the reason that i do that is because sometimes a seed does not germinate so uh, the, you won't know it's gonna if it's gonna germinate or not until you look at it and all of a sudden it's been two weeks and there's nothing in that cell <laughs> and then you say oh no it didn't come up so you don't want to have to start all over again and waste time so i plant two uh, per cell and I'm fortunate enough that um, these both of these came up and over here I did the same thing but if you noticed with this one there's only one plant in here I did plant two seeds in that cell but I only got one plant that germinated so it's well worth um, doing two when you go through and you plant your seeds. So here is a scallop squash. Put the tag in there. And I'm gonna take another scallop squash. Now, 
as you can see, these were having issues and this one is already gone um, because it stayed in that pot too long before I transplanted it. So I'm just gonna gently work that apart and uh, I'm going to plant the one that is still viable in this pot. So that's one scallop squash for this pot. So, so far we have two scallop and we have two crookneck. Now with these squash, I'm going to give them some supports. I do have um, some bamboo sticks that I'm going to put in here and attach them to the bamboo so that as they grow, they will have some support and continue to grow up without leaning side to side. But that's what's gonna happen with these. I also am going to put some plant food in here. I'm not gonna do anything that's going to make them sprout super fast because at this point I don't want them to grow fast because I can't plant them outside yet but I am going to give them some food um, because they've been growing in that cell and they need some nourishment so what I'm using is miracle Grow all-purpose plant food um, and that needs to be diluted. They recommend a teaspoon of plant food per gallon of water. And I'm not gonna do a whole teaspoon because these are very young plants and uh, I don't want to overdo it for them. So I'm gonna, I put under a teaspoon in this one gallon water and stir it up and i'm going to water these in so because i'm using a liquid fertilizer it will get Chew the plants very quickly because they're going to uptake it through their roots. Especially this one, I'm worried about him. And this one is going to do really well. This one that has two, it's going to do really well. And um, when I transplant them again to their permanent growing pot, I'll separate these at that time. But until then, I'm not going to mess with them uh, in terms of disturbing the root process. I'll let them continue to grow that way. So, that's that one. Now, let's take a look at what I'm going to be doing with the ones I put in this cup. And I'm doing this because I want you to know that you don't have to start your seeds in a seed sardine tray. You can start your seeds in cups, okay? Or if you if you had something else that you wanted to use, like a little ceramic um, pot, you can use it in a small ceramic pot as well. But um, with these cups, once they start to, once they germinate and start to grow, because these cups are clear, I'll be able to see the root structure as it grows. And also, with these cups, I cut a hole in the bottom here, and there's a hole in the bottom here. 
so that when I water it, uh, the water comes out into this tray and the roots don't get over watered or waterlogged or rot in the process of trying to grow. So each cup has its own holes that I put in there. And these pots have holes in the bottom that were there when I purchased the pots. So you always wanna make sure that you put your uh, plants in pots that have drainage holes. So this is my favorite squash. I love these honey nut squash. They don't get too big, but they're just big enough for one person to have a wonderful meal. They're very sweet and they taste a lot like pumpkin when uh, you cook them. I like to roast my honey nut squash and I also put, I also put some brown sugar on them when I roast them, which really gives it a good flavor. So, and this is what the seeds look like. The seeds look like pumpkin seeds. So they're not very tiny seeds. And with these, I'm still going to do two seeds um, per container, just in case one does not germinate. So we've got one here and we've got one here. And I'm burying it just enough so that I cover the top completely. I'm gonna put one here and one here. I don't need to bury them too deep. I'm gonna put one here and I'll add another one here. So I'll lightly cover these, pat it in. And I'm going to water it, but I'm not going to put any plant food in with these seedlings. Um, they're, they're not going to need that until they actually grow and they get their second set of leaves, which are their true leaves. Um, until then, they're gonna be able to sustain themselves from the contents of the seed itself when they germinate. So they're not gonna get any plant food right now. I'm just going to give them some regular water to water them in. And these seeds should germinate within 10 days to two weeks is when I expect to see something peeking through the dirt. to grab um, the supports for that. One second, where are the supports? I buy the supports from one of the big box stores and they come, I like to buy the bamboo. And this bamboo is long enough so that um, I can do more than one plant with it. I can actually cut it to the size that I want it to be. And you don't need anything fancy to cut it. I'm just gonna use my gardening shears. Um, first, I'm gonna cut it in half. Right about there. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna see how tall I want that to be for this particular planter. So I'm gonna cut it here.
Hmm. There we go. So I can put this in here with this one. And I have some twist ties that will gently hold it to the support. So I'll put a twist tie here. And it's just enough so that it won't fall over and it will conform to the pole. Okay. I'm gonna do two twist ties for this one. When you're doing the, the ties, you have to be careful that you don't uh, actually damage the delicate stems of the plants. So, I'm gonna move this so you can see it. That one is better supported with the twist ties. Now, as you're watching this, think about um, how you do your squash, if you have grown some already, and leave a comment. Let us know how you do yours. Um, it will be helpful to the other people that come to the channel to see your comments. I do respond to comments. So please give us your feedback as to how you do yours. I can cut this one here. I am looking forward to these growing and doing well. It will probably be, um, they're going to go outside and they'll probably be late June, early July, before I can begin to harvest some. Here we go. Put this one to the support. And I also would like to know if there's some other things that you're growing. What else are you growing besides the squash? Are you a new gardener? Are you an experienced gardener? Let us know where you are in your gardening journey. Now, these are supported with this twist tie. And there's that one. So those four are done. They have had their um, They're fertilizer, they're watered, they're supported, and they're in a larger container where they will be happy until I can plant them outside. And then with these, they're planted, they're watered with no fertilizer, and I am going to Put their tags in so that I know what they are. These are the scallop squash. I 
and I have row lights that I'm going to set these under um, and that way they will be able to thrive in the correct lighting until they can go outside. So that's it for today. If there's anything that uh, you'd like to comment or ask about, please put your comments below. Thank you for watching Gardening for Better Health. I will see you in the next video.